Go. So as promised, we're in the kitchen with Chef Lee Hilson, Executive Chef Royal Palms, and he's going to be making a dish that not only did he make famous at the Royal Palms, but also on the Iron Chef. You ready to get cooking? I am. But all first right. of all, you've made these shoes famous. I've got to point those out. Those Thank you. Killer. I run faster and jump higher. <laughs> and my seasoning seems to be better when I wear these. All right. So we're making your world famous carbonara. Uh -huh. So first of all, we're just going to pour some cream straight into the pot. And like I said before, a recipe is a guide, so don't worry about having exact measurements and all that. So we've got some cream in there. We've got garlic and thyme. I'm just going to chuck that in. And there you go, there's a the sauce. So you're, essentially you're making tea. Yeah. You're just taking cream. Now, you're using something here called manufacturer's cream. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain that a bit? Because there's heavy cream, there's light cream. Yeah, this is the stuff I get from work. <laughs> <laughs> well, manufacturer's <laughs> cream, uh, most heavy cream comes in at around 28 to 32%. Manufacturing cream comes in at about 34%, um, which means it's 34% butter fat. And the cool thing about that is, if you want to see how big of a difference that is, the difference between 2% milk and whole milk is 1%. Whole milk is 3%. So this stuff is about 4 or 5% uh, fattier than regular heavy cream that you buy in the supermarket. It's a lot richer, a lot buttier, uh, a lot creamier. So next up we're going to make some pasta. And uh, I was going to try and put two pounds of flour in here, but I'm going to try and put one pound of flour in here. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's a little smaller. Yeah, so the recipe is not going to be exact because it was weighed out for two pounds. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Now, it, what kind of flour are you using? We're just using a heavy, uh, strong, heavy, like a strong flour here, okay. um, like a bread flour. All right, um, so a little higher gluten content, less yeah. starch. Mm -hmm. And then uh, actually a pretty good way that I, when I was uh, doing baking when I was younger, they taught you to see the gluten content in a flour, is if you take it and squeeze it, uh -huh. like so, it stays together pretty well. So it clumps up. So it clumps up pretty good. If you, so, um, but it actually comes apart fairly well too. But if you have like a cake flour and squeezed it together, mm -hmm. then it would just like, pretty much disintegrate. Really? It wouldn't hold together. So much higher starch content. Yeah. It doesn't clump up. Yeah. So that's what I remember. But Genius. Yes. So we're going to chuck in four eggs. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to turn this on. We'll pulse it. And then we're just going to let it run. And I'm just kind of hoping I've got the quantities right here now. Because, <laughs> I, don't, because I divided the flour out. So this is one of the coolest methods I've seen for making pasta dough at home. Oh, it's the easiest way of making, making pasta dough. It knocks it out, it kneads it for you. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's fun. Now, if I have a situation where it's not coming together as a ball, um, we can always add a little bit of water to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, or you could, uh, what we used to do is actually add a little bit of lemon juice, just because it helps tighten the dough up. Really? Yeah. But uh, water's absolutely fine. And you put, some people have put olive oil in there too, but I personally don't like olive oil in my pasta dough. And if it's a little bit too too wet, then like I say, you just fold in some more flour as you as you need it. As you need it, get it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just a pretty face. So this is what you're talking about when it, it's starting to spring back because yeah. I notice it's not holding the shape. Yeah. Now in about 20 minutes, this will re relax and become a little more malleable so we could roll it out? Yeah. Fantastic. And this is one of the one things I would recommend any household to have because you can buy so many different attachments for it. You can buy grinders for it, juices. Well, I love this, yeah, the grinders, the sauces, and attachments are phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it's just the best. So I've got my pasta and then I'm just gonna feed it through. Well, my understanding also is when you, when you fold it in thirds and then put it through a half turn, you actually kind of weave the gluten together like that. So instead of having all the gluten run in one direction, it actually creates kind of a nice little hatchwork of the gluten, so no matter how you cut it or how you bite it, it's going to have just a really nice mouthfeel to it. Mm -hmm. What do you look for when it's done? For me, it has to be like the consistency of like like a baby's bottom, like that hey, super silky, silky, silky feel to it. What you're looking at here is, it's, it's a little less than an eighth of an inch. And this will just about double in size with cooking. Now, the nice thing about fresh pasta is the... Uh, it, it won't get lard, it won't get as, as, uh, as fat as dry pasta because it's already moist. It's not going to absorb a whole lot of liquid. So the density of the noodles may be going to double one and a half times the width here. So it's not going to be substantially thicker than that. If I dry this out, it's going to get thicker though. This is the thyme and the garlic and the cream. You can actually smell it starting to come out. Now over here we have some water to cook the pasta in. 
and it's important that we salt it. But salt is not um, like a magic pixie powder. I add salt to the water until it actually tastes good. So I should have a faint flavor of salt in here. If I don't, it's really not doing anything. What I don't want to do is have the, this beautiful flavor from the pasta leach out in the water because then I'm just making pasta tea. Whatever has the strongest flavor is going to have the greatest influence. So if I have uh, a water with just kind of a nice faint salt flavor to it, it's going to bolster up the flavor of the pasta. So the transfer is going to be from the salt water into the pasta instead of the pasta flavor into the water. And guess what? Now I have hair. <laughs> this is some sauce that I made earlier. And then if you make this sauce and you want to reheat it, you always want to boil a little bit of cream like this and then add it to it, otherwise it's going to break. Um, and it will look like it's going to split on you anyway. Okay. But you'll be able to whisk it back in. Okay. So, so Chef brought up a really good point. Um, in a restaurant, you want to do as much ahead as possible without affecting the, the final result. So as long as you can maintain quality, it's smart to do stuff ahead. So he's made this sauce ahead, and the way he reheats it is by starting it with a little cream. So we're reducing the cream. We're fortifying it with more thyme and more garlic. Um, but he's stirring in some sauce that was already made into the cream. If he just took that chunk of reduced sauce and put it in a pan, it would essentially fry and would break. But I'm going to add a little bit of salt to it. Okay. But I'm not going to over season it. And the reason I want to put too much salt is because in a carbonara you need to have a bacon of some sort, traditional. Okay. So you use pancetta. We're actually using pancetta and prosciutto. Both, both salty items. Both salty items. So I just want to put a little bit in there just to, to really just help give it a kick start, if you will. Do this one. Right. Now I'm going to pull this back into this pot over here. Why not? Look at that. Look at that. It's so I'm just going to come through, and it doesn't have to be a perfect cut, but I'm just going to do like a little battens of it almost. And then I'm going to put it in my cream, like so. Then you're going to start getting that flavor in the cream. This is, this is basically Italian bacon. We just cut it into nice, nice little chunks. And then little more downs. Yeah. And then we just saute it down just because we made it, so we might as well cook with it. So I'm gonna put that in there, and in about, probably about a minute, I'm gonna add this just to, to reheat it. Now what are you looking for? Um, basically I want it to be al dente, uh, so I just want it to have like a, a tiny bite to it. Okay, um, but a, the raw flavor should be gone. Yeah. Like a raw starch flavor. Yeah, exactly. See how it's getting all nice and saucy and just lovely jubbly? What was that? Getting all saucy and lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. Yeah. This is prosciutto, so another ham steak here, and we're going to put a raw egg yolk on top of that. So you took the prosciutto, and what did you do? Just put it on like a silpat? Silpat mat in the oven, and just baked it for like eight to ten minutes. Okay. So really, 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 really simple. <gasps> so we're just going to put that. That looks. Uh, it's just super silky, though. Oh yeah, I mean, and it doesn't look gummy or gluey. The noodles are still individual. Mm -hmm. Really looks pretty. I'm going to take this egg, which I pre-separated. I'm just going to put that straight on top of the little crisp, as you do. Some cheese, and this is as much as you like, as much as you want to put on. I actually like putting a lot on it because it adds to the dish. Now tell me about the function of the raw egg yolk. Um, basically what you do is you mix that through the pasta and it just okay. adds another dimension to the sauce, a bit more richness. Um, that's, all... that's what this dish was missing. Yeah. I gotta tell you, it looked a little lean to me in the rich department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put parsley on here and my main reason for doing that is actually to cut, cut back that richness. When you take a bite of this, if you take a bite of the whole parsley leaf with it, it's gonna burst a, like freshness in okay. your mouth. And just clean it up a bit. It's really going to help cut it through. All right, I'm going in. I'm going in. All right. All right, so I'm going to go right into that yolk. Yep. I'm going to go bang, crack that kid open, and look at that. It's like a big sexy wound. That looks gorgeous. Now the yolk might seem a little odd for Americans because we, like, we, we're, we tend to be afraid of food. But this looks fantastic. Oh, this is like Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> 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 mm. You've still got that texture on the pasta. Amazing. 
Chef Lee Hilson, thank you so much. Thank you. For coming to the house. Cheers. Chit-chatting with us and showing us how to make this incredible dish. All right, we're gonna have the recipe for you, but so many cool tips that won't be in the recipe. Um, I would advise you to just watch this over and over and over again because this guy shared some wisdom today. So pick up on it, learn. Make something delicious for someone you love, even if it's just you. Love yourself, feed yourself. Chef, thank you so much. Thanks for having us.